the, the bulk of the work uh, I'll talk to you about is, um, is um, done by a, a, a postdoc uh, in the lab, Arsha Banu, who just uh, walked in just a little while ago because she was back in the lab uh, injecting some mice, which I'll tell you about in, the, uh, in a few minutes' time. Uh, we're basic scientists, and uh, as basic scientists, we try to have very clear, focused, defined questions uh, that we try to, uh, to understand in the lab that we can translate into some sort of clinical uh, uh, setting. So we work on FGF signaling, we work on osteosarcoma, and FGF and mTOR signaling, and I'd like to show you some data uh, that shows, uh, we think, some promising data that these two uh, pathways might be targetable for, uh, for therapeutic um, uh, uh, in intervention. So the whole thing is based on, so we all know about osteosarcoma, but my entry into osteosarcoma is, uh, goes back quite a few years. We made this mouse many, many years ago, um, a long time ago. I, I like to think it's recent, but it's, uh, it's not. <laughs> uh, I guess <laughs> in the context of the history of the universe, it's, it's, quite, it's quite recent. <laughs> uh, well, we overexpressed this proto-oncogene. See, this was when I was a postdoc in, in Vienna. Uh, we were working on this uh, AP1 transcription factor family, and, and CFOS is a, is a powerful proto-oncogene first one to be shown that, that is, induces tumors, uh, which, uh, uh, funnily enough, not mutated in, in human osteosarcoma, but uh, last year, Adrienne, in some of her sequencing work, has shown that FOSS is mutated in osteoblastoma, so kind of reactivating the whole uh, AP1 and bone, uh, bone cancer field. It was very exciting. So we made this mouse a long time ago, and uh, not really understanding why these mice get, uh, get tumors uh, took a long time. We still don't know, but we think we have some targets. And we did some, some, uh, some screening of some cell lines. We found out that when you uh, overexpress CFOS, uh, FGF receptors are upregulated. So we found out by, by protein analysis, immuno, by signaling analysis, and by colony assay that we think we have uh, active FGF receptor signaling, a tyrosine kinase receptor, which is targetable, and which is actually there are inhibitors in the clinic for different, different cancers. So we worked on that for a while. And this is all work done now by Dan Weeks, a postdoc in the lab who's now left, who's actually a, a, post, a, a PhD student with, with Sibylla, actually. When, uh, and we haven't actually met, so it was nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and he did all this, all this previous work that, uh, that was published a few years ago. Um, right, and we went back and we, we confirmed whether uh, FGF receptors are, in fact, expressed in, in the mouse. And, and, and they are, in fact, expressed at high levels in the, in the tumors. Uh, high levels in, uh, of the adapter protein, which uh, in, in indicates active FGF receptor signaling in the tumors. And excitingly, we found in these early, early lesions, so these very, very small lesions, because when the tumor, at least in the mouse context, when the tumor gets this big, it's, it's sort of less interesting in terms of what are the genes which are causing the initial transformation. So the fact that we see it in the early lesions uh, suggests that FGF receptor might be driving this early event in, transformation, in osteoblast transformation. So that was pretty exciting. Uh, so it's expressed in the mouse, and of course it's, it's expressed in humans. Uh, we've to TMA analysis that, uh, again, a former postdoc, Takeshi Kashima, did in the lab. Takeshi, uh, unfortunately, suffered uh, with his own, his own malignancy. Uh, he worked with me, he worked with Adrian Flanagan, so we, uh, he did uh, quite a lot of work, and we miss him tr uh, tremendously. Um, he did some TMA analysis, and we showed that, that uh, indeed, high numbers of FGF receptor positive uh, samples in, in human osteosarcomas. And correlating with, with CFOS expression as well. Maybe not so relevant, but it was good to see that there was a correlation between uh, our two favorite, uh, favorite genes. And Adrienne has also gone on to, sh to show that uh, uh, there's amplifications in a, in a significant proportion of, uh, of human samples of FGF receptor 1. So we went on now to, I guess the, the, the exciting bit now is that uh, in terms of, so we, we've kind of left the, the primary tumor alone. We went into metastasis because we wanted to prove that the FGF receptor was important in vivo. We did this in collaboration with Fernando Lacanda in Spain, this orthotopic injection where we inject tumor cells into the uh, slightly different model to what uh, uh, Dominic has done with the paratibial. This is now injecting into the bones. And we found that genetic knockdown of uh, FGF receptor causes, uh, we haven't analyzed the primary tumors, but it significantly inhibits the uh, lung, lung metastases uh, of these cells. And excitingly, when we do the same experiment and inject wild-type cells and treat systemically with an FGF receptor inhibitor, we also see inhibition of, uh, of, um, of lung metastasis. So suggesting that this is a targetable pathway for lung metastasis. Uh, so uh, why is this happening? So we did a, a screen, an SHRNA screen, to identify cooperating pathways with FGF receptors. And we came up, we, we found that the mTOR pathway, another uh, serine 3 and kinase pathway, uh, seems, to cooperate, oops, seems to cooperate with uh, FGF in growth of osteosarcoma cells. Some in vitro analysis, and just to remind you that mTOR is also uh, activated uh, in uh, high numbers of primary uh, human tumors. Uh, and FGF receptor signaling, we've shown crosstalk. Uh, here's FGF stimulating mTOR, uh, and we've shown through a number of assays, whether it's signaling or proliferation or cell migration, no time to show you all the data, 
that, that FGF can drive mTOR signaling, and that's inhibitable by FGF receptor inhibitors. So in vitro, there's very, very good evidence of, of, of crosstalk. So the experiment we did now, the hypothesis was that if we, uh, going back to our metastasis assay, uh, the hypothesis is that if we, if we treat these animals with uh, dual inhibition, uh, what do we see with, with lung metastasis? So we first wanted to see whether uh, the, uh, there is crosstalk. So we, we uh, had some knockdown cell lines uh, of uh, mTOR using a chick can assay. It's a good xenograft uh, assay. We see that when you knock down uh, mTOR, you have uh, inhibition of growth. Uh, we do subcutaneous uh, tumor cells in mice. We see inhibition of growth. We think it's due to inhibition of uh, proliferation uh, using this my mitosis marker, phosphohistone H3. So at the context of these ectopic xenograft models, we see good cooperation between uh, inhibition of both these signaling pathways. We do the uh, real experiment in the mice, again, orthotopic injection. We see when you inject the cells and do drug treatment over 21 days, again, we see a, uh, a, 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 um, a, um, a synergy between the, the double treatment of, of the drugs where we see inhibition of lung metastasis uh, more so with the double treatment of the drugs. And we think that's due to inhibition of proliferation, again, if you look at the KI67 marker. So in this context of this orthotopic xenograft model, we think we, we've shown that uh, we have a combination of, uh, of both inhibitors uh, might reduce tumor metastasis. Again, we haven't worked on the primary tumor much, so uh, uh, that's still an open, open question. So how does all this happen? Uh, we're now uh, going into looking at how these cells are seeding into the, into the lung. So we're doing an experiment now where we're actually uh, injecting uh, tumor cells directly into the tail vein, bypassing primary tumor, uh, and we generate uh, uh, met lung metastases. And we can see, we've, we've, we've first shown that, uh, at least indeed, in these lung metastases, we have active FGF receptor signaling, and we have active mTOR signaling. Uh, so we've, we've, with, with these experiments, we've shown that, we can, that the, the tumor cells that are seeding the lung are actually expressing the target uh, genes that we want to inhibit. And the experiment that Asha is doing right at the moment, as we speak, is to take these and treat them with the, uh, with the, with the drugs to see whether we actually inhibit these lung uh, nodules in the presence of both tumors. We think that experiment will work, because if you do another experiment and ask, do, do, do the cells seed the lung in the presence of inhibitor, we see that a very, very short-term experiment where we inject cells with, with, uh, in mice that are pre-treated with the drug, we see that these cells are seeding, seeding and colonizing the lung to a lesser extent than in, uh, in non-treated non uh, non uh, mice. So we think that the combination of FGF and uh, receptor and mTOR inhibition not only might it uh, attenuate tumor cell growth, but also tumor cell seeding into the lungs, uh, which, uh, again, opens up a whole new uh, avenue of questions as to how are these cells actually getting to the lung and, and uh, seeding and proliferating into the, in, into the lung tissue. Uh, right, so uh, to conclude then, we've shown through a number of assays, and we think that uh, both in vitro and in vivo, that combination therapy of FGF and mTOR might have a potentially greater impact on prevention of lung uh, metastatic seed, metastasis seeding and growth. And really what we want to do now is, we've already shown that the human tumors express high levels of FGF uh, R1, we and others. Uh, Adrian has published that uh, high levels of mTOR, uh, active mTOR signaling uh, in human tumors. I think it would be interesting now to look at some of these TMAs and, and look at uh, co-expression of FGF uh, R and mTOR. Uh, the, uh, the aim might be to be able to stratify patients to optimize uh, therapeutic intervention for metastatic disease. Uh, that's where we're at uh, at the moment. Um, this is where we're based at Guy's Hospital uh, next to the Shard. Uh, all the work was done by, uh, by Arsha um, uh, that's sitting in the back of the room and all the uh, in, vi in vivo work with the um, orthotopic uh, injection was done in uh, Pamplona with uh, Fernando Lacanda and all this was really funded largely by BCRT. So thank you very much. <laughs>